Welcome once again to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Our final conversation this morning is on the protest at the United Nations General Assembly. It's by the Nigerian Indigenous Nationalities Alliance for Self-Determination. It's a convener, Professor Banji Akintoye, uh, had, of course, spoken a few weeks ago, declaring that there will be a protest from the 14th to the 24th um, in New York. Uh, to share some of the challenges and uh, you know that Nigeria is currently facing, they have uh, spoken about uh, uh, genocides and ethnic cleansing and some of all of that. And um, they will be taking their protest to the United Nations. It did kick off yesterday, and so we're speaking this morning with the public affairs analyst Mark Adebayo, who's joining us. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, Mr. Debayo, let's get your thoughts on the idea of protesting at the United Nations uh, General Assembly. How relevant is this for the NINAS group? Yeah, first thing is that uh, it is strategically incumbent. What the, the action they have taken is strategically incumbent. Nobody is going to shoot at them uh, at the UN Assembly. Nobody is going to arrest them. Nobody is going to disturb them. Nobody is going to harangue them. So they, they are protected by law, both local and international laws, to do what they are doing. If they, if they did that in Nigeria, it would have been a different ball game. So it, uh, it is strategically incumbent upon them to do that. And of course, uh, what they are asking for, the United States, I mean, the United Nations is uh, best placed to, to give it um, reality, to, make, to, to bring it to bear. You know, that, that is why what they are doing today is strategic, it is relevant, it is important, and uh, I think um, uh, it, it will draw the attention of the whole world to the quagmire that we are facing in this country today. So kudos to them. If, I, if my schedule had permitted, I would have been there with them now, solidarizing. Hmm. All right, I, I want us to I want us to look uh, a little closer at the reasons for their protest. Uh, Professor Akinto has stated that um, uh, the people of the South and Middle Belt uh, want to show the world the crimes against humanity and attacks on press freedom, free speech, and other criminalities being aided by the current administration here in Nigeria. Are, are these genuine concerns? Are, are there really genocides and crimes against humanity uh, being carried out in Nigeria that should give rise uh, uh, for a protest like this? Every claim and every allegation on that petition is genuine, is germane, it is realistic. Now, um, the issue we are having now is that some of us who, uh, if you like, call us a moderate, who rather, you know, advocated for uh, a reduction Nigeria, you understand? We are not going to push aside. We, we, our voices are now being drowned because the government refused to listen to the force of reason that restructuring is better than disintegration. They refused to listen. And so for that reason, the people that believe in the self-determination, which is a fundamental human right of every people in the world, according to the United Nations Charter, so you, you cannot you cannot believe them. If we, for almost 20 years that we have been clamoring for restructuring in this country, I think has been clamoring for restructuring. You know, m m uh, many groups in the Southwest and the South South and the Middle Belt have been clamoring for restructuring that this country should be restructured, that we should go back to what was working for, for all the continent of Nazi history. Let each zone, let each region determine its social, economic, and political fate by itself. So, in the in Nigeria, the restructured Nigeria, you know, where power is devolved. To the zones, but the powers that be are refused, and that was going back to self-determination agitations now. And it is a trade that is moving that nobody can stop anymore. So the issue of social media is no longer becoming popular, especially in the southern part of the country and the Middle West. So people are saying that even if you social, the country is not going to work. And then the, when they bring in the government as an enabler of this crisis. What the question we should ask ourselves is that how is it that in the past six plus that it is the issue of that area, the issue of uh, especially this killer that, that have dominated our polity, and that the, if there is any issue that the Buhari government is emotional about, that is concerned about, that is prompt about, that acts 
decisively about is the issue of the of the killer orders. Once people begin to complain, the number one spokes organ for Miyeti Allah today is the federal government of Nigeria, is the presidency. So now people are complaining that these people are killing people, they are destroying farms, they are destroying towns and cities, they are they are overrunning places and taking over over uh, over 100 villages and uh, and hamlets on the plateau have been taken over by these. Uh, killer others, and they are renaming those villages and hamlets. You know, they are renaming them. And these criminals have remained on the scene of crime without a direct intervention by the federal government. So now you begin to wonder uh, wh whether it is not legitimate to allege that the government is complicit in the activities of, the, of these guys. So um, if the government had listened to the call for restructuring, I don't think we will we, we'll be at this stage now. You know, if if we, they are listening and uh, have gone, and then of course the 2014 Comfort report, which recommended uh, a restructure Nigeria, should have been should have been looked into and acted upon. Even if they are going to make some little bit of amendment, but but even during the campaign, the president made it very clear that he was not going to touch that report, and that is the result we are seeing now. It does seem that the country. Uh, the way things are going, it doesn't seem that Nigeria is unsustainable because you can see that even the security agencies are overwhelmed now, despite their best efforts. Things are things are getting out of hand. Look at the way they just went to a military camp in Safara State, killed 12, 12 uh, security personnel, took away so 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 much arms. So and that, that is a problem to us. It, it's like you know most of the, you know before. Uh, before the, the, the late uh, terrorist leader was, was killed, Shekau, he was boasting that you know about 50 to 60 percent of the weapons they are using were seized from the Nigerian military. Mr. Adebayo, uh, 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 yes, yeah. I, I want us to you know still talk about this issue um, regarding how Professor uh, Banji Nina's chairman has worded. Um, their concerns. He's saying, saying that, you know, there's a genocide going on in Nigeria. And the meaning of a genocide really is the deliberate killing of another group or another nation to totally wipe them out. But when we look at the integrated situation in Nigeria, yes, we have had um, incidences of crimes committed by people from northern Nigeria on those in southern Nigeria. But it seems like the bulk of that um, security challenge is within the north by northerners on northerners. That's what it seems to be. So would you say um, Nenas is right to describe what's happening in Nigeria as a genocide? Well, um, if you look at what is happening in Southern Kaduna for the past six years, what is happening in Southern Kaduna is qualified to be, to be called a genocide because of the concentration of attacks and killings and destruction of the indigenous people who are mostly Christians or animists. You understand? That qualifies... For uh, you know, the argument that uh, most of the crimes and violence happen in the north is neither here nor there. What happens is that, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, I believe some some people in the north, Samfara, uh, Borono, and Co, will be in the forefront of this struggle. Because well, yeah, let us consider the fact that most of the violence and killings and uh, you know, are limited to to the north. But it is not an excuse for inaction by the federal government of Nigeria. You know, whether people are being killed en masse in the north or in the south is neither here nor there. What is happening is that people are being killed. That, that is, a, that is a, more or less, if you don't want to call it genocide, call it pogrom. You can call it pogrom, mass killing of people. And, you know, how did we get here? We got here because we have refused to learn from history. We have refused to learn from history, you know. We went to war in this country, it's a, a bloody civil war that has cost over 2 million lives, almost 3 million lives, the equivalent of the number of Jews that were killed during the Second World War. And we went through all that, and we didn't learn any lesson. We have, we have, we have seen coups and counter coups in this country because of bad governance, because of injustice. Still, we have refused to learn a lesson. I feel we, I'm, not, I'm not saying that all Nigeria are fully weak. If you if you want to if you want to paper over it, you call them the ruling class. We don't have a ruling class in Nigeria. We have a ruling clique. So 
they, they have not learned a single lesson about all the tragedies and problems and troubles that have befallen this country. And, and that is rather unfortunate. It's rather unfortunate. All right, it is, so what we are seeing is due to the lack of you know, understanding of our history and the lack of understanding of why we have to do things differently. Okay. Mr. Ajabayo, um, the crux of the matter here for Ninas, why they have gathered in, the, in New York, you know, where the United Nations General Assembly is holding, is because they say they want self-determination. They want a referendum in Nigeria um, to be able to vote if they want to be part of Nigeria as a country or to break out to have their own state. Um, I want us to talk about the possibility of these, this platform, this protest at the UN headquarters, um, giving them what they want. So what's the intended outcome? Is it that the United Nations will talk about this in one of their sessions and be forced to issue statements um, asking Nigeria to go ahead and put that referendum um, you know, clause in the constitution? What exactly are they aiming for and what might be the outcome of such a protest? The fundamental expectation of the organizers of the protest is, is for the United Nations to table Nigeria's issue on the table and put it on the table for discussion and, of course, recommend to the federal government of Nigeria to organize a referendum, an internationally supervised referendum. You know, uh, that, that, is the ultimate, that is the ultimate goal, to get the United Nations to intervene by you know, say, telling Nigeria, look, you need to do a referendum. If people, because, you know, it's, it's one of the rights of the people, self-determination is one of the rights of internationally recognized rights of a people to say that we uh, we, we need to, uh, you have to do a referendum. Yeah, and if there is enough international pressure on the government, they, have, they, they will balk who? They will have to, they will have to, that's to the tune of the local international communities about organizing a referendum in Nigeria. We have to organize a referendum. One thing I've been advising, actually, to my Yoruba people and activists and self-determination groups is that, okay, uh, we need to do as much of local, you know, intra-Yoruba advocacy as we are doing internationally. So that when we go to the referendum, we go with one voice and we we'll go with one foot. And then it will come out the way we want it. I permit me to say that I still have some modicum of faith in the corporate existence of Nigeria, if it is restructured. I know that if today the federal government decide to listen to restructuring advocates and decide to and put in place the mechanism to restructure the country, whereby the power is devolved to the zones, uh, that, that would be the, the, the people who are advocating for self determination. We, we are, are, are likely to, they are, they are not going to be as vociferous as they are now. Mr. Adebayo, you know, Mr. Adebayo, I, I, I spoke to um, Pa um, Adebanjo, the leader of the Afeni Ferry about the same issue regarding restructuring, the, you know, the agitations of the Yoruba nation. And he said that he highly doubts that this restructuring that they want would happen during the administration of President Muhammad Buhari. Do you share that same belief? General Muhammad Buhari will not attend to restructuring, will not even listen to restructuring, is not going to listen to self-determination, is not going to listen to the call for justice and balance and equity in this country. It is not in his nature. It is not in his first. It just seems that it is not in his nature to you know, to engage things that are just, that so are... So what then is the right? essence of the protest if you of, believe of that the president would not, you know, go ahead and, and, and accede to your demands? You have to put pressure, you have to put pressure on government. You have to put pressure on government. When you put pressure on government, you know, all over the world, a government that refuses, that refuses to bend a little to the wish of the people ultimately will break. That's what happens. So, so... We cannot respond international pressure at the end of the day. Now, if uh, what Baba Debanjo uh, said uh, is not as if it is impossible to achieve, what he is saying is that this president will resist it. He's going to, he has been resisting it. We clamor for balance in government appointment. He refused to listen. We said we don't want uh, open grace. We don't want these uh, animals overrunning our schools, our houses, our 
uh, our farms, our towns, uh, causing behem. He said no, that is going to give them either Ruga or something. When that one could not work, he's now he said he should go and look for a moribund, uh, a dead, uh, they said, you know, that uh, he wants to open up uh, grassing roots. You know, I mean, he, everything about him is just to satisfy. You know, he, uh, you know, the, the president is not helping himself. He's not helping matters because he keeps doing things that uh, you know portray him as somebody who is um, ethno religiously biased. So he's not doing anything to disabuse the minds of people who are led who accuse him of ethnocentric. Uh, biases. He's not doing anything to disabuse our minds. So that is the problem we are having. Why wow. is he that? Why is he so fixated on confiscating lands for these others in this age? When governors are saying, "Come, we will give you land to ranch your cattle," the president is insisting on grassing roots, and then that is creating more violence, more bloodshed, more killings, more kidnapping, and more insecurity. Why? No, you, you begin to wonder. So he's not going to listen, but. His hands can be forced by wow. mass protest, mm. consistent. The 11 days they are going to use at the UN, I am sure there is going to be, uh, there will be some positive results. I know that. Oh, well, um, a lot of people may, you know, not agree that, you know, there will be any actual results. But I, I, want, I want us to talk now about uh, collaboration of uh, NINAS, because it seems they are mostly about the um, Yoruba agitation and Middle Belt. Do you think that they should seek some partnership or collaboration or join hands with other uh, self-determination groups, including the IPOB um, and maybe uh, the um, Shiites in the north, you know, who have also had their own protests running for many years? Do you, do you think it's important that Nina starts to build these collaborations to give themselves more numbers and give themselves a louder voice uh, that might be more effective? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that should be done. As a matter of fact, not just at POB and uh, other people, even northern groups, there are northern groups that also believe in restructuring of Nigeria. There are northern groups who believe that. They, uh, there are northern people, there are northerners, who be, there are northern opinion leaders who believe, as a matter of fact, in the self-determination of the country. So I believe they should, we should rule, reach across the Benue and the Niger, all over the country, every section of this country. We should not uh, be going on this struggle from the premise of thinking that the, that the North, that the whole of the North does not want self-determination. No, there are people who want self-determination. Let me tell you what happened uh, in the 2014, one of the things that happened in 2014, uh, come I wasn't there, but I've read much of the reports and uh, I'm close to most of many people that went to that compound. One of the, you discover that in the, the middle bed that is now part and parcel of, uh, of self-determination, Initially, resistance, even restructuring. Yes. Minority groups in the north, in the core north, not middle bed now, resisted restructuring because they said that if you restructure the country and you allow each soul to determine its fate, that the minority groups in the north will be wiped out. That the minority group in the north, the Christians in the north, the enemies in the north will be wiped out. Because by that time, there is no national, you know, a mechanism to control what happens in each of the zones. So, so that was why at the initial stage, the minorities did not, and the middle bed didn't want to, you know, uh, agree on. It took uh, today back, Pastor today back, carry late Yinka Odumaki, Comrade Yinka Odumaki, and many people uh, to, to 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 convince them uh, on on how to go. I mean, to, to support restructuring. So now the self determination group must not marginalize some uh, groups in the North who also believe in either the social or self-determination. Because I, I have a full and new friends, some of them are academics, who, who tell me that, look, you guys are blackmailing us. You are blackmailing the full and new. You are, you, are, you are just... And they blame the parents for that anyways. But they are saying that, okay, let's even go for this restructuring and let everybody be on their own. I mean, in the corporate Nigeria, they, they don't believe in the self-determination or disintegration or whatever, but they believe in the restructuring of Nigeria. No. Okay. If you go to the North today, the educated ones who are not, you know, religious extremists will tell you that Nigeria will be better off restructured. All right, well, I, I Mr. Adebayo, which, yeah. do you, which do you think should be the biggest fight of Nina's and every other person who's agitating? Should it be 
a fight for restructuring, um, a fight for self-determination, or a fight for constitution uh, review? Um, it is too late to, to convince Nigerians to support restructuring. They believe all of us who have advocated for social justice in our time, and they, they, they have some justification for that. I would um, I would say that they should put they should continue pushing putting the pressure on the government locally and internationally on self determination. Maybe we might just get restructuring, you know, because once they see that oh it's like this self determination, the no way out of it, they may they might just we might just get restructuring. And for me. I believe that a short Nigeria is better than a rock short Nigeria. So, I I see I see have some little bit of hope and faith in the corporate existence of Nigeria of a short Nigeria. Yeah, we but, are but, so you don't you don't Nigeria. believe in and tell me that a cow can come to my house. Yeah. So you don't believe in a, a, a review of the 1999 Constitution and better electoral laws. You know you don't think that those things would probably be more important at this time, um, as, of course, Nigeria remains united, you know, but with a better constitution, better electoral laws, stronger voice, you know, a democratic voice to the people. Now, even this constitution that we know, this Decree 4 of 1999, that we call constitution, as defective as it is, gives us a federation, a federal Republic of Nigeria. How is that being followed, especially under the current president? You know, oh. there's no good, there's no constitution you give to, to a country that is faulty, that is going to work. It's not going to work. Yeah, so, so, so that's, case, that's why there's talk about I, I, a constitution I, I, review. It, look, if either for the structuring or self determination, you still have to review the constitution. So don't let us put the cap before the horse. I mean, if we decide that we are going to do social, it means we are going to go back to that constitution. If we start examination, we are going to still go to our review that constitution. So we, what, what are we going to achieve? If you, this constitution, the current constitution is being manipulated in a very negative way. Now, how could a federal government tell states that they cannot set up structures to secure their people, that they cannot give order to criminals in their, in their forests and, and towns to live, and the federal government will say, no, you cannot do that, to criminals? So why, why is it that the current president is protecting people who see, it seems, it looks like he, he is protecting people who are a problem to some people. They are a problem to our economy in the South. They are a problem to our security in the South. They are a problem to our well-being, our welfare, and our peace. And we say we don't want cows moving about. We want them run. Nobody is go, go back to anywhere. If you want to ranch your cattle, we are going to give you a space to do that. But the president is saying no. They, they can, no, it cannot be moving about. You know, right. you can't be bringing cattle. You can't be bringing cattle if I don't have a fence in my house. So cattle that is passing will just come and mess up my compound. And you expect me to look at that? No, I, I, I won't about. take it lightly with anybody that uh, does that to me. And the president must listen to other voices. And right. then, so and I, I support Nina. Let me say I support Nina's call for the declaration of Mietia as a terrorist organization. Because I believe they are. All right. Uh, Mark Adebayo, thank you very much for your time this uh, Wednesday morning. And we wish you a very interesting day ahead. Thank you, Mr. Adebayo. Thank you so, thank you so much. Well done. Your station is doing well. Continue promoting pro-people, pro-justice uh, issues. And uh, the sky is your beginning. Well done. Thank well you. done. All right. Thank you. And that's it on The Breakfast this morning. Uh, it's been a roller coaster ride talking about the issues in the country politics, insecurity, education, and yeah, it's a wrap. Um, Annette Felix, thank you very much for joining us today. And of course, you can catch up on our social media platforms, pretty simple, at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel also at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Osao Gye Ogbonwa. Bye bye.